All right. What's up, guys? Uh, Corey, I'm with Coach Slippo. Coach Slip, what are we breaking down today? What's going on here? Uh, due to your flavor of the month, I think uh, from your conversation with Mr. Gray a little bit ago that you got some good plug on. And then I chirp you guys that I know his game better than anyone in the world, um, besides maybe himself, that uh, if you wanted to break down any of his games, let me know. And then uh, I figured Hopkins was the best team they had played at this point. And I'm a big Mets Bauer fan. So I said, why don't we do UNC Hopkins? And then you jumped all over it because you get excited over these types of things. And uh, so I got UNC Hopkins dialed in, ready to go when you're ready. So I'm ready for you. We're going to be keen in on, on Chris Gray, who is a preseason All-American, naturally. And uh, he had a big day. He, was, he had eight goals and two assists in this one. So I figured there's a lot of stuff we can talk about, a lot of good, because – he uh, he he tended to have a lot of good plays in the in the short short season that was going on this year. So he's capable of making good plays. Yes, very capable. So we'll, let's break down some of them. What do you say? All right, yeah, let's do it. All right, you see me okay? You see this uh, screen? Yeah, it's load. All right, we're moving. We got the ball top center. Um, Carolina possession. So they're going a little five on five. Metsy loves this sub game stuff. Not a big fan of it, but uh, he loves it. It's a good opportunity to play fives. Um, Chris, for those of you who are wondering, is here. Uh, I can tell by just his manner. Isn't yeah, that's him. Good, simple pass down, pick down. I think this is a good decision from Chris. You can see the help inside here. They're manipulating. He's got to work out. So you're getting an approach at 15, one on one. I don't love this, but again, I think that's a great take. Um, it's really simple action for the five on five uh, to get a good look, you know, kind of like, you know, um, predicted and, and, and as a coach, you can manipulate that. Uh, for sure. um, was that, was I stopping it too much there? Now that we're kind of, you get a feel for how I break things down. No, it's good. It's good. I think also it's good for you to touch on just like, especially off ball principles. Like yeah, sure. what, yeah. what, what do you talk to your guys about? What's most important? Like how important is spacing? Where should guys move? Like, as you talk about this stuff, it's all good. For sure. So I, I know a, a lot of what Metsy does, not everything. Um, I actually think they're in their, um, their little one, three, two set that I'm actually been watching a couple of these things. And I told them I wanted to hear more about it. Um, but yeah, so we talk a lot about like, off ball offense is reading your man, not the ball. You should always know where the ball is. You should always understand the spots in which your offense is trying to hit, right? There's dangerous areas on the field um, that regardless if you're in a 2 2 a 42, a 51, a 1 3 2, whatever it is, regardless, all of those offenses essentially hit the same spots at the end of the day in the play portion. So what we talk about is reading your man and how those spots can just change by a couple yards here and there um, throughout the play. And I'll, I'll talk more about uh, those spots as, as we as we watch the game you know um, so right now they run a little backside mumbo here um, what's really cool about offense is how you can dictate you know defenses are trying to dictate offenses they want to know where they're going to slide to know where their recoveries are their two their three their fills all that good nonsense um, so we talk about all the time what's their weapon their weapon is communication so this simple backside two-man exchange right here right with with actually with Chris oh no he's at X um, this backside two-man exchange, he's hot, and his man is now exchanging out. So even though it's a mumbo, which everybody gets, you know, really excited about, especially at the high school level, I feel like a lot of guys at your level do this. Um, it, it's just a really simple switch, right, for the defense, but they don't handle it that way. Why? Because he dictates – this defender right here dictates at the moment that I'm hot. So all he's concerned about is whether or not he has to slide, right? Defenses have rules. So on this strong-hand sweep – they get a, some really good action and hands-free just based on all he's worried about is the slide, and then he doesn't communicate well enough to bump out and exchange those guys there. That makes sense? Yep. Um, Ten-man ride. We want to watch this, or you want me to fast-forward? Yeah, you can fast-forward. We'll, we'll try to hit as many UNC possessions as we can. Oh, we can do that. They score here, and then they get the ball again here, UNC. All right, we're in it. We're in it. Good elevation. They play with good height. You can see the height here. This is really good. 
um, especially if the team's going to play with you. Mm -hmm. It's like right now he's the backside two slide and he's 25 yards away from the cage. Mm -hmm. you know, and he's actually 15 yards away from his, from his help, right? Because these guys aren't helping. They're too concerned. So it's, it, it, that, that's really, really, in an offensive standpoint, that's really good height. Again, like right now. So they're running a 4-2. We run this all the time. This is our base, right? A lot of people call it a three out, which, which I don't understand. But um, so right now, he's the backside, like he's the, the two slide, right? And so he's dictating he's hot. All that he's thinking about is whether I need to slide or not. And so what we talk about with our guys all the time in this situation is what do we have right now? We have a three on two in the backside. That's what we have. Like it's a math problem. So we have a three on two. We've got two to the ball, even though the dodge has just barely started. And so now all it is, all the game is, is skills and spacing. That's all the offense is. So let's, let's boil it down. So we throw it through X and I, I disagree with how Metsy's hitting his spots. Um, but again, this is where here, as he kind of follows this, he's helping into the crease. He's trying to push the recovery behind the dodge, right? So we work on all the time, we call a jam pass, is throwing this ball from the dodger. If you're capable of throwing that ball, right, that forces him to have to rotate over, right? And so a lot of offenses, and I break down your guy, like these high school guys all the time, they're so drilled on throwing the ball forward to get the ball to the backside, you become that much more dangerous as an offense if you can get the ball to the backside by throwing it backwards. Now, can you talk a little bit about the type of pass you have to execute to be able to like dodge so vertical and be able to kind of essentially throw backwards? Yeah, so we call it a jam pass. Um, it's a concept and a skill in our offense. Um, and so basically it's like a three-step drop for a quarterback. It's like you're right now, while you're playing, you're, you're behind center, right? This is your center, essentially, the defenseman. And so as this slide happens, you need to separate your hands from the man on ball, from the slide coming, and then throw the ball right across your face to this guy who's essentially stepping into a step down. That's the same side step down in our world, right? And so there's two ways. If he's a lefty, then you teach what we call QB turns. I keep the football analogy. I'm, I'm a son of a football coach. So in play action, the first thing a quarterback has to do is get his shoulders and his head around to make sure he's not going to get killed. Right, mm -hmm. that, that the run did what it did. So it's a weak hand jam. So you quickly get your hips around. You're still continuing to work towards the sideline, but now the stick is in your strong hand if he's a lefty to now be able to throw this ball backwards. You know, and so it just forces the defense to that both of these guys are a threat. And whichever one you screw up, we can get the ball to by throwing it forward or backwards. Um, what's unfortunate is he doesn't look for the same side skip. So what I would call that he would be a same side skip in our offense, right? And so his, if he was on the outside half of this offense, he would be reading outside in, outside in, right? Because defenses are going to cover inside out, right? So if the outside is covered, they either did a really good job recovering or they missed somebody inside. So that's why that's your progression. So if you're on this side of the, of the ball, right, or the strong side of the offense, his read actually should be right back through to the follow to see if they screwed it up, right? If he's central at X, then he'll be able to kind of see both of them, mm -hmm. right? He's splitting the field in half. He dictated to come to the ball side. They do a backside two-man uh, pick game. Not a bad idea. And Mr. Gray wants the ball. Not a bad idea. Uh, looks like they what we call resize. So their initial offense didn't get, gather anything. So now they're resizing to something else. And this is what we, we would call this our hybrid. It's essentially the same offense they're in. Here's four guys working together. Here's two guys working together, right? They get pretty jumbled. Two ball side cuts, almost three, actually. You can see three guys in one. So this, this is where Coach Little, like, this is bad spacing, Metsy. What are you doing, right? Um, but he's letting them freelance. For sure, which there's a lot of there's a lot of um, power to that for a player. Yeah, it looks like it, look, it looks like it was going to be like kind of like a seal slip that the wing player just didn't get through early enough, where the top center guy didn't delay his cut to the alley enough for a step right. down. Totally, exactly. They're not on the same page. So we talk yeah. about all the time is we need to communicate just as much as the defense does. You know, we need to communicate what spots we're hitting. And if I tell you I'm going to grandma's house, which is what we call the crease, 
Mm -hmm. then you know, oh, okay, there's only two more spots for me to hit, and I'm going to hit one of those, right? So why, why, do you, why do you call it grandma's house? Um, because growing up, so my father is from Queens, Ozone Park, and we would, um, for Thanksgiving and, like, Christmases and stuff like that, we would drive to grandma's house, spend the entire day, and then drive home. We never stayed the night. So we call it grandma's house because we're going to go to grandma, we're going to have dinner with her, she's probably going to give you 20 bucks, and then she's gonna, you're, you're going to go home because you don't want to stay there. Right. And so we, we call it that because we want to cut to the crease and then work out of the crease and just constantly flowing our motion um, because the defense feels comfortable there. We're going to score and cut and do all our good stuff in grandma's house, but we're never going to stay there. You don't hang out there. She, she, she loves you, but not that much. Or maybe you, just, you don't love her that much. You know, I don't know. However you want to look at it. It's kind of messed up. But, all right, let's get back. To it. So um, Chris is going heavy left. He's going to roll. Um, when he's going, I mean, he's a scorer either hand. He loves coming out of his left with a roll looking to score. So when he, when he gets here, he's got no option but to roll except for the skip, you know, which he, he, could, he could put it there if he wanted to. And then this is what – so this is a jam pass just in the reverse, right? So this is what I would call a jam, throwing cross body, having your hands free, throwing to someone behind you. Hmm um really hard skill and he puts it he puts it in his box um, which is pretty which is what makes him so good um a lot of stationary though like i don't like how so they move and now watch them all stand and watch you know they move a little bit but so would you this. so would you would you consider this right now just kind of unscripted offense where yeah. you got some guys attacking and just guys working independently yeah. off ball Right. So, like, these, these four guys are free-flowing. He's asking for the ball. I got a short stick. It's like right here what would be great is as he pushes this is if he actually spit this ball here, right, and then force the defense now to reorganize. I'm the new hot. I'm the new fill. I got to be down and in. He could go either way. This guy's got great space. He could go to his left hand with a strong side push. He could go back down the alley. Right, and then he because because of how low this dodge is, he could come back down towards that, and then you're playing three on three on the same side. It's a good look, good skip, but that all came out of just making it up. Right, they're going into a big little here. This is a great area for a big little. Why? Because you can manipulate with or without the ball. Um, you can manipulate these two guys, these ball side guys, because both of them are three to five yards away from being able to shoot. And so if he were to slip this above the cage and they miscommunicate it, he's going to have to help or he's going to have to help. Mm -hmm. right? If he attacks this, he's not really dodging this that hard. If he attacks this hard, just like Virginia um, with Bocklet and Stanwick in 2011, they used to play in this area so much. And so this would be an awesome time. You see this guy's hips? This would be an awesome time to be attacking this hip and then actually split top side. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to full drop step there. You see how committed his hips are for him to go in through X here? Yeah, so, especially if that defender on ball, he goes under the pick. That's an extremely tough angle to then cut up the field if he decides to take it up to his right hand, which I think he's doing here. It's kind of like a, a, a sweep through X. So yeah. as, he, as he sweeps the Rex here, like, that's tough to hop the cage and then take a nice angle to cut him off the GLE. 100%. But he doesn't really push the corner, so. No, he doesn't. He, he's, not, he's not dodging the score, right? Like, this entire initiation in my head when I'm watching this, he's not dodging the score. Like, his body language does not show I'm trying to score, which shows <laughs> the defender, like, what do I need to, like, right. okay, I can kind of relax, you know? And then, again, what drives me crazy, and our guys do it too, is there's, there's a lot of watching. You know, you see all the standing, very stationary, very, very stationary. Now, they're one of the, be they're the best offense in the country, arguably, right? So, with all this stationary, him helping in, a skip that nearly gets picked off, right? If this gets picked off, Mets is killing somebody, right? <laughs> but now, you've got, you got the best player in the country, arguably, with the ball, right? Or outside of Sowers. you got, right, top center with four seconds on the clock, you know, coming out of a role, how you doing goal, right? And it's so it's like none of that was scripted. You know, this is all free-flowing. Could it have been better? 100%. But as a coach, you kind of swallow your 
that you've taken advantage to eat them up in a film session and how to make this better. But then at the end of it, you're like, oh, well, you scored four on six because we're subbing two, bailing, getting ready for the ride. <laughs> you know, um, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was just great handle. That split roll was just so fluid and quick. It's like, you don't know what handy is. It's so yeah. difficult to defend a kid like that, especially yeah. with range. Oh, it's ridiculous. They're man up, I think, here. Yeah, they are. They do a lot of um, a lot of set movements. Really simple. They're so skilled. Yeah. And it's just so simple. And, again, this defender actually plays this pretty well. Yeah. Like, you know, it's just the feed is perfect. You know, the, it's – does a great job off ball, just kind of like hiding behind that defender's helmet, just like hanging out behind where you can't see him. Perfect. All right, six on six. They're doing that five on five pick play again. A um, little sub game. Um, their spacing is, is is interesting. So we used to do this too. My first year at BU, we ran this a little bit. Well, it's, a good, it's a good way to get you know maybe maybe your faceoff guy hung on defense. That's probably what they're looking to do here. Well, right, you're. Most defenses aren't going to make him the slide. Right. Right? So all he's worried about is, is maybe helping a little bit. But if you watch all the def- – like, like watch the near side pole, watch how he just like looks – he's got to be ready to go across. You, put, you force them into an adjacent package, which mm-hmm. offensively, if you can force guys to run adjacently, you, you're in a good spot. Mm-hmm. I don't love the I don't love the shot. Yeah, it's yeah. You got to hold on to that thing and get a good possession of that. That's why I don't like the sub game because then it's like okay, now they're coming right back down our throat. Like how you doing? Um, Pop scored. All right, let's see what they got. So they're running that. Uh, looks like Chris might be elevating into their yeah. So they're elevating into their four, their four two, and so he hits their spots differently. So we do the same thing. We just hit the spots differently. So, you got the back our leg, rules, yeah, so our rules, these two are actually playing together, and then these four are playing together. He's got, all, he's got them all working together in a way that he just replaces the crease from X. Mm-hmm. Chris works out to become the skip. Here's your follow. Dodger, in, in our world, would go to grandma's house. And then he sets it up with a backside to uh, big little. Right? So all that was smoke just to get to this. Now it's in Chris's hands. Not a lot of the dodging is is done with purpose, right? You're not they're not drawing any slides. So now they get back into that invert look. Well, not an invert, but Chris dodging at X. Oh. Okay, so this is where – so we talk about having four spots and there's four lanes whenever we're dodging initially from X. So he's going to be your follow. you got to have an adjacent and a skip. Or in this sense, you know, the way we teach it, you got to have two adjacents because right now in the, when he's in the center of the cage, we have two adjacents because whichever mm-hmm. way he goes, that's the adjacent. The opposite becomes your skip. So here's our skip. Here's our adjacent. Now these two guys inside need to layer themselves – and, and we say between three and seven yards, but really it's, it's, it's vertical layering and um, laterally as well off these pipes so that one guy inside can't cover two. And so the reason we hold this adjacent is because Chris could draw a slide. He does. And now if he's standing here working to the ball, Chris is giving it to him for a step down on the same side. Are you ideally trying to have a righty, a big righty, or a big lefty in that spot? It'd be great to have a righty there, but there's times during this play and this flow, like this might not have been – like it's really hard as a coach on the sideline to go, hey, go our 42, right, three-man exchange to a big little buddy behind. And then when that screws up, we'll go – you know what I mean? It's like sure. they end up in their spots. So you train flipping hips so that he can stay strong-handed. He's actually got his hand, like his hips in a really good spot. If he stayed outside here, mm-hmm. he could work down in with that left hand, just working this right foot here, keeping his hips open to the cage. So as he catches that, he could plant that right foot and fly lefty. So for me, it doesn't – yes, in an ideal world, let's have a righty there. But if you can train the skills, his lefty would be fine there. Mm-hmm. This turn is where Chris is the most dangerous right here. When he comes out of this and he gets his head around, just like in the last one where he threw that jam, he's so dangerous. 
Petro. Somebody wants a sly. Now he's got a short stick. Yep. Slipping a lot. <laughs> Look at that. He slips. He's still capable of reading the skip. <laughs> you know, and he, and he actually puts like a pretty good ball. It's just way too many sticks in the lane. And again, their spacing's bad. Like, sorry, Mets, your spacing's bad. You got two guys in the same lane here, right? This spacing is actually pretty good because he's got to cover two guys, right, that are about 10 yards probably apart. We would really like to have him in tight here. Yeah. Just go to grandma's house because now – because, again, we have a three on two. Or we have a four on two based off the slide. Do you always want someone in grandma's house at least for a couple seconds? Yeah, we always want someone hanging out with grandma. Always. Yep. Yep. We want to give the defense someone to honestly to recover to. Yeah. Because they, that's, they have rules. And so we can manipulate their rules and keep the space. Um, so there's times where being in an open helps on like sweeps, for example. Um, but Hong, he's dangerous in this. But again, they're just standing. You know, I don't know what they're so worried about. It's a great take, though. I love dodging the Hong. Mm -hmm. this is what we would actually do this is how we teach it dodge strong side have a front side push and then just get everybody else in his backside and just get let make it a two on two which they do and if he was in a better spot working this way he's looking yep. at he's looking for a step in so is that is that a good time ideally if the slide doesn't come to kind of work your five by five moves you know just get to your strong hand and, and work 100%. some moves yeah 100 percent you're going to manipulate more off of contact at, than you are in this area than anywhere else in the field. Mm -hmm. So even if you kind of grind into him, and Chris is so good seeing over, his seeing over his shoulder that a lot of the guys aren't capable of doing, right? That as he grinds here, he's going to see if he's going to come or if he's going to come while you should be able to feel in front of you. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, like that's the easiest thing. So that's a great time. Like you said, we've done like three possessions. 